Hello students, the purpose of this video is to get you acquainted with the real number system. So we'll be working with lesson one out of um, unit P. So when we think about real numbers, they're simply the numbers that we use on an everyday basis to describe different quantities. So any number that you could think of, literally anything, if I tell you to think of a number right now and I didn't give you any conditions, anything that you name would be a real number. So I've given you several different examples here and I've given you pretty, what I like to call pretty numbers, <laughs> and pretty numbers and non-pretty numbers, whether it's a decimal, whether it's, you know, 0 0.35678910112, 10, 12, you know, it doesn't matter what the value is, a fraction, an integer, um, even math symbols like pi, which stand for 3.14 and several other values after, regardless of the number that you think of, it is considered a real number. But that's a lot of numbers to think of. Um, in order to be even more descriptive, when we think about quantitative values, which are just num numerical values, numbers, um, we can specify them into groups called sets. Um, and so we're going to learn about these different sets. But you first want to think about, you know, what is a set? What do you think of when you hear the word set? So when I think of a set, I think about a set of keys or a set of drums or a set of dishes. They're basically things that go together, things that share some common similarity. Um, maybe it's the pattern, maybe it's what they're used for. It's a collection of distinct objects and the same goes for things in math. It's a group of items that share a common characteristic called elements. So all of your elements in your set have something in common. So if I'm talking about a set of numbers, there's some relationship between each of those numbers within that set. Now there can be sets that have nothing in them. Um, this is called an empty set or a null set and we actually notate this with a circle and a slash through it. And a lot of people write their zeros that way and I tell individuals that as they get into upper level math, you don't wanna write your zeros like that anymore because that symbol actually means something in the world of math and it means that you're looking at a set that doesn't have anything in it. Now there's two ways to notate a set. You can either list it out like a roster method. Um, you know, if you think about a professor, they have a roster of the class. What is the roster? It's a list of all the students in the class. So if I'm using the rostered method in math, I'm listing out all the numbers that are included in that set. If I'm doing set builder notation, I'm notating what it is I'm looking and looking at and then I define it. So here I'm looking at x such that my values of x are between one and six. So this symbol right here, my second arrow, is read as such that. So x such that x is between 1 and 6. So when I think about the real number system, it contains several different sets. You have the two big sets, rational and irrational, and then you have subsets which are inside of your rational numbers. So integers, whole numbers, and natural numbers are inside of rational numbers. So I want you to think about you know, some observations that you can make regarding the set. I encourage you to pause the video and jot it down and just to kind of think through you know, what conclusions can you make regarding this image. Now there's many individual sets within the real number system, um, but some sets have subsets of another subset. So a subset is simply being more specific. Um, within your set, maybe you can name you know certain things within that set. So for example, if I was thinking about the months in a year, and maybe my set includes, I'll name my set a big A, and I'm gonna include January, February, um, March, April and May and maybe I want to think about a subset months that generally stereotypically have the color pink in them um, you know like holidays that revolve around the color pink so if I think about that then a subset of set A would be um, February has Valentine's Day um, I would say maybe when does spring happen I can't think about can't think officially on the calendar when spring but I'll put May like that's when flowers start blooming right and so I think about pink so stereotypically February and May you know have a lot of pink oriented things in them and so that would be a subset of my set so that means February and May are included in set A but then January or March and April are not included in my subset. So if we concentrate on this image for the mathematics side of this, if we look at rational numbers, we can list integers, whole numbers, and natural numbers all as subsets of a rational number. So I have this question here, is every integer a whole number 
or is every whole number an integer? I want you to think about that. And again, I encourage you to pause this video. Is every integer a whole number or is every whole number an integer? And the answer to this question is if I'm here, if I am a number like the number four and I'm in the whole number circle, that means four is a whole number. It is also an integer. It is also a rational number. Four is not, well, actually, four is a natural number, so I guess I should put that there. So four actually is considered a natural number, so it would be also a whole number. But let's say that I have the number negative two. Negative two is considered an integer. It's considered a rational number, and therefore it's a real number. But negative two is not a whole number, and it is not a natural number. So when you're looking at your circles, you're included in the subset that you're a part of and everything outside of that. So you're going larger, you're not getting smaller. When I think about a rational number, it's essentially any number that can be written as a defined fraction. So there's this difference between what's defined and what's undefined when I think about the context of fractions. So I've listed out different types of fractions here for you. And this one, seven over eight is a regular one. This is considered an improper fraction because my numerator is larger than my denominator. This is considered a mixed fraction. But then these last two, I come into the issue with having a zero in them. One has a zero in the numerator, the other has a zero in the denominator. And so you don't want to forget what to do when dealing with a fraction that has zero in either the numerator and the denominator. When you think about fractions, you're just thinking about division. So when I look at the zero divided by four, I'm basically saying I have zero Oreos and you wanna divide them among four groups. So how many Oreos is each group gonna have? Well, if I don't have any Oreos in the, in the start and I'm trying to divide them up into the groups, then every group is still gonna have zero Oreos. Whereas if I have four Oreos, but I wanna divide them up into zero groups, how do you have zero groups? It doesn't make sense. You run into an issue and therefore it is undefined. So zero on the numerator is good, it always equals zero. Zero on the denominator is bad and is always undefined. So rational numbers are numbers that can be written as defined fractions. Irrational numbers are numbers that cannot be written as defined fractions. I like to think about rational numbers as generally being my more pretty numbers and irrational being my not so pretty numbers because you get values like this that I've underlined that are long and nasty and we, there's no simple way to write it. So rational number subsets, various um, examples here for you. Um, any number written as a fraction is irrational. Um, my integers, including zero, one, two, three, and then going backwards into negative values are my integers including zero and positive numbers are whole values and then my counting numbers. So if you think about elementary school, when you first learn to count, you count one, two, three, four when you're counting your fingers, right? Those are your natural numbers. You naturally start at one. Irrational is super easy because it's just your numbers that cannot be written as a fraction and there are no subsets that are associated with that. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful. As always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out.